This video explains how to format numbers using the sprintf function in the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. In this video, I will show you many different examples for the application of the sprintf function. And all of these examples are based on the data object that we can create with line two of the code. So if you run line two of the code, you can see at the top right of our studio that a new data object is appearing, which is called X. And we can print this data object to the bottom in the R Studio console by running line three of the code. And then you can see that our data object X contains the value 123.456. Now let's assume that we want to format this number differently then we can apply the sprintf function as I'm showing in the examples of this tutorial. So in the first example in line five of the code, I want to show you the basic application of the sprintf function. And within the sprintf function, we need to specify the way how we want to print our data. And we also need to specify the data object itself. So in this case, our data object is called x. So if you run line five of the code, you can see at the bottom in the RStudio console that our value is returned once again. However, this time our value is formatted as a character string. And you can see that with the default settings of the sprintf function, we have added three zeros at the end of our number. So we can change the number of decimal places in the sprintf function, as you can see in line seven of the code. So in this line of code, I'm specifying this 10 in front of the F. So if you run line seven of the code, you can see that this time 10 decimal places are returned. So you can see that we have added much more zeros as in the first example. Similar to that, we could also reduce the number of decimal places using the sprint F function, as you can see in line nine of the code. So this time we are specifying a two within the sprintf function. So if you run line nine of the code, you can see that only two decimal places are returned. We can also use the sprintf function to remove all the decimal places from our value. So if you run line 11 of the code, you can see that only the values on the left side of the decimal point are returned and the values of the right side have been removed. Another thing that we can do with the sprintf function is that we add spaces in front of our number. So if you run line 13 of the code, you can see that we have added several blanks in front of the number and we have still removed the decimal places on the right side. We can also add spaces in front of our number and still keep the decimal places on the right side as you can see in line 15 of the code. So if you run this line of code, you can see that one number on the right side of the decimal point has been kept and we have still certain blank values in front of our number. Another thing that we can do is that we can add spaces on the right side of the number, as you can see in line 17 of the code. And the difference in this example is that we are adding this minus sign in front of the number so if you run line 17 of the code, you can see that no spaces are shown on the left side of the number, but we have added certain blanks on the right side of the number. We can also add signs in front of our number, as you can see in line 19 of the code. So in this example, I'm adding a plus sign in front of our number. So as you can see, after running this line of code, our number is returned once again, but this time with a plus sign in front. The sprintf function can also be used to show our number with exponential notation, as you can see in line 21 of the code. So if you run this line of code, you can see that our number is returned once again, and this time with exponential notation. You can also see that this time we have shown the exponential notation sign with a lowercase e. However, we can also change that as you can see in line 23. So if you run this line of code, you can see that this time our exponential notation sign has been converted to an uppercase E. We can also show the number without any decimal zeros, as you can see in line 25 of the code. So if you run this line of code, you can see that our value is shown without any decimal zeros. And we can also use the sprintf function to show our data with scientific notation, as you can see in line 27 
So if you run this line of code, you can see that we have converted our number to an output with scientific notation. It's also possible to use a fixed amount of decimal zeros, as you can see in 929 of the code. So if you run this line of code, you can see that we have added several zeros on the right side of our number. And we can also add certain signs on the right side of our number. So for instance, we could add a percentage sign on the right side of our number, as you can see in lines 31 and 32. So in this example, I'm using the paste zero function in combination with the sprintf function, and then I'm specifying that I want to add a percentage sign. So if you run lines 31 and 32 of the code, you can see at the bottom that our number is shown with a percentage sign on the right side of the number. And last but not least, I want to show you another example in which I'm using the sprintf function in a more complex way. So in this case, I'm specifying a character string at the beginning as first argument to the sprintf function. And within this character string, I'm specifying a sentence. And within this sentence, I'm specifying certain placeholders for certain values within this character string. And then in the second and the third arguments of the sprintf function, I'm specifying the corresponding values to these placeholders. So if you run line 34 of the code, you can see that our sentence is returned. Let's create one more complex example for you. And you can see that the values one and four have been added instead of the placeholders that we have specified within the character string. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.